Didn't see you there. So you wanna make money off of plants, don't we all? Today I'm gonna to share nine ways that you can make money either directly with plants or with your knowledge of plants. And none of these methods are illegal or require you to take your clothes off, which of course is a bonus. But all jokes aside, looking back at most of the videos that I made this year, I found that almost all of them revolved around me either spending money or talking about ways that you guys can spend money or sharing products that nobody actually needs but just cost money. And to be honest, as inflation continues to increase and prices of almost everything are skyrocketing, part of me feels irresponsible just continuing to make videos talking about spending money when so many people are currently struggling. Struggling. To give you a little background, I've been making money off of plants for the past three years, although I've been interested in entrepreneurship for basically as long as I can remember. In today's video, I'm going to start out with the absolute basics, although just note that every single one of these topics that we talk about could literally constitute multiple videos of its own, and if this is content that you guys are interested in, please let me know it in the comments below and we can certainly delve more into these topics in the future. But with that said, if you're interested in learning how to make money with plants today, then keep on watching. We're going to get into it right now. As always in my videos, I'll put chapters down in the slider below, so if you're looking for something specific, you can skip to that part. But with that said, I'm gonna start out with a bunch of lessons that I wish I could go back in time and teach younger me about business. Quick disclaimer that I forgot to mention as I was making this video, but in no way am I trying to act like I'm some super successful business mogul or know everything there is to know about business. I just simply wanted to share the things that I have learned along the way. So hopefully this video helps somebody, but please don't come for me. Now I know you might be tempted to skip past this part or kind of just not pay attention, but trust me, if there's any piece of the video that you're gonna pay attention to, this is the most important part. The first lesson that I wish I knew is that it is never too late to start. I catch myself doing this one even a day and I'll think to myself, I'm too late on a trend or I'm too late to a social media channel to get in on it and I might as well just not even try. But I can promise you for basically everything, unless you're trying to market your plans on MySpace, that that probably is not the case. I will say that I was fortunate to learn entrepreneur skills early in life and I started my first plant style businesses when I was 23. However, I know a ton of people in my personal life who will tell me all all the time that they want to start something but they feel like because of their age maybe they're retired maybe they have kids they just they feel like they're too old and the best thing that I can say to that is whether you start this thing or whether you don't start this thing you're gonna to continue to get older either way and for almost all these methods the time frame that you need to be successful really is not that long so if this is something that's holding you back I strongly strongly encourage you to get rid of that mindset and just go for it the next one is honestly probably the biggest reason why so many people aren't successful in business or just fulfilling their dreams in general and that's because because people give up too early. The unfortunate fact of the matter is there is no such thing as an easy button. Nothing's going to happen overnight and you're probably going to spend more days opening up your phone to zero notifications about your business than you want to admit to yourself. But I promise you these are not reasons to give up. Particularly on YouTube, some of the biggest creators on the platform like Mr. Beast or PewDiePie are at points in their career where they just weren't sure if it was ever going to go anywhere. And clearly you can see they're at a point now where things are very successful. The thing about entrepreneurship is there is no blueprint and there's no guarantee of when or if things will work. The only thing you can guarantee yourself is that if you give up, it's not gonna work. So again, I know there's gonna be days where you wanna throw in the towel, but just hang in there. That kind of plays into the next point, which is that business is compounding. And what I mean by that is that the work that you put in now is going to pay off exponentially in the future. Most things in business do not have linear progression. In fact, most people's success on a curve is going to look something like this. In the beginning, things are gonna be very difficult, and as time goes on, they're just gonna become easier and easier and easier. On the other hand, I wanna take a bit of a step in the other direction and say that you need to set realistic goals. I have a lot of friends who consult people on starting businesses and another huge trend that happens to come up when people start businesses is setting unrealistic goals. While I think it's really important to push yourself, you tell yourself your goal is to completely replace your income by the end of the week then unfortunately you're probably gonna be a little disappointed. Instead, I recommend setting very small incremental goals that help you achieve your long-term vision. Everybody has different takes on this, but in my opinion, the day-to-day -day goals that you're working on should not extend past the current quarter. At the end of the day, you'll get into a rhythm of what time frame goal setting works for you, but I know for myself as somebody who tends to be a procrastinator, the shorter of a time frame that I can set for goals, the more likely I am to stick to those goals. Now I just started getting into this one, but my next point is to sit down and realistically think about what your typical work patterns are like. I'm being completely honest with myself, I know for a fact that I tend to be a procrastinator and I also tend to be somebody who gets really excited about projects in the beginning and then lose steam on them over time and just tend to move on to something new. Everyone will have different tendencies, but the better that you can identify where you tend to fall in terms of completing work, the better that you'll be able to put systems in place to prevent those problems. Again, I know for me, setting really short-term goals and also having some accountability partners so I don't just completely give up on a project are things that are really helpful for me. 
The final piece of advice that I'll give is don't get hung up on the details and don't get hung up on not knowing how to do everything. My motto in life is literally fake it till you make it and I approach pretty much every situation in my life with this mindset. And the thing is, I know firsthand that this isn't always easy to follow. I have a bad habit of going into situations thinking that I'm not good enough to do something or feeling like an imposter in the situation or just not sure if I'm doing things the right way. I think that that's really normal and it's okay to feel that way sometimes, but don't let it stop you from doing the work. The great thing about getting started with a new business is that no matter how bad you mess something up, at the end of the day, there's nothing even historically around about the business. Even if you make a mistake so big that you put yourself out of business, you can just go and start a new one. Anyway, those are the main things I wish I would've known before I started any sort of business venture. But with that said, let's get into the actual ways that you can start making money. The very first one, if you're watching this video, may be obvious or maybe it's not so obvious, but that's starting a YouTube channel. I tend to think most people know this at this point, but in case you don't, creators on YouTube make money off of making their videos. And primarily, YouTubers will make that money in two ways. The first being AdSense. These are ad placements that go right on top of your video. You probably watch one before this one starts. And for every person who watches that video or clicks on an ad, you get a teeny tiny amount of money. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of AdSense, but there's a million videos out there that you can watch on it. On the other hand, you can do sponsorships. These are paid product or company endorsements that you do on your channel. And in exchange, businesses can actually pay you pretty serious amounts of money. Now do just keep in mind that this strategy can be a slower one, but on the long term, it can be incredibly profitable. A couple things that I know tend to prevent people from starting YouTube, one is they say they don't have good enough equipment for it. Now I'd be lying if I said that I didn't have a somewhat expensive setup. Prior to me starting YouTube, I was actually into photography, so I did have a DSLR camera to start. However, you'd be shocked at the number of creators who are now some of the biggest creators on the platform who started building their channel filming off of their phone. I mean it when I say, if you have a phone that can record video, that is absolutely the only thing that you need for YouTube. Do not let somebody tell you otherwise. Additionally, I know some people are just camera shy and they're worried that people that they know are gonna see their videos and make fun of them. Again, this one makes me really sad, but it's a very real fear for people. At the end of the day, I guess all I can say to that is that if you're worried that people in your life are gonna see your videos and make fun of you, to be completely honest, they're probably the ones that should be made fun of if they've got time to sit around and make fun of you for bettering your life. I know that that doesn't always make it easy, but I promise the internet's actually a much nicer place than people tend to make it out to be. I'm not gonna talk about this one separately, but conversely, if you are camera shy, podcasting is another great option. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge podcast person, but it's a huge area that has a lot of growth potential, so I highly, highly recommend it. The final thing about YouTube again coming back to the point of feeling like you're late to the party so many people say this when I talk about YouTube that there's so many creators on the platform at this point that there's no point in starting a new channel and I couldn't disagree more here's the thing I love watching YouTube videos and almost every single day I open up my feed and think to myself oh my god there is nothing that I want to watch if you've ever experienced that in your life that should be a cue to you that there is a need in the market for more content creators. And that content creator could be you. With that said, I'm gonna move on to our next strategy, and that is starting a blog. Now, this one's both similar and different in a lot of ways to YouTube. Typically when writing a blog, again, it is going to be a slower start, but you can ramp this one up pretty fast. Initially to start, your revenue will probably come from ad hole placements that you put onto your website, but over time as you develop your blog and it becomes more popular, there's a million different ways that you can monetize them, from doing paid sponsorships to doing paid guest articles, Honestly, the sky's the limit for this one. Personally, I think this one's really great for people who don't necessarily want to be in the limelight, but maybe have really great writing skills. For myself, I'll be honest, I'm a terrible writer. I do have a small blog on my website, but it's not an area I expect a lot of focus into. However, this is going to go into a lot of the strategies we talk about, which is that if you're already filming videos, you have all the information that you were talking about there already, so you can very easily convert that into a blog. And while we're talking about cross-promoting channels, that's gonna bring us into our next way of making money, which is selling plants or selling plant-related items online. Now this one's near and dear to my heart because it's actually the way that I got started in the plant community. And I think the thing that's the coolest about this one compared to the rest of the strategies that we're gonna talk about is that you can literally start making money with it today. When I got started with this one, I literally just took cuttings of plants in my house and gathered up the plants that I wasn't that interested in anymore and posted them on a Facebook purge group. If you're on Facebook, there's hundreds of these purge groups available, just Google like plant purge, and you can literally go on there and post plants that you have for sale and people will buy them. You ship them out of your house, which again is a skill that probably constitutes its own video of itself. If you're interested, let me know. 
but that's it and you start making money the day of now for me i kind of transitioned my channels over time so again i started out in the facebook purge groups then i moved to offer up which is honestly a great channel to start on because you don't even have to worry about shipping people can come and just pick them up locally and thereafter offer up i moved to etsy which was probably my most profitable channel for a long time and then more recently i moved to having my own website leafmealoneplants.com which is where i sell the majority of my plants off of now i think the important thing to note with this one is to start small and you're gonna build it up over time honestly i would not recommend day one going and buying like thousands of dollars worth of inventory to try and flip it. Start small, see if it's for you, get a few plans shipped under your belt, and over time you'll build up more confidence, you'll find a niche for yourself, and you'll just have a better sense of what works and what doesn't. Now again, if you're just taking cuttings of your plants, this one can be completely free to start. However, do note that this is also probably the one, in my experience at least, that has the most potential for you to lose money, unfortunately. Whether that be through inventory you purchase dying or having orders that either die in the mail or the customer isn't happy with and you have to refund. If I'm being honest, it's just not a risk-free option. Now, I'm not saying this to scare away anybody, but I just wanna be as transparent as possible if you are in a position where you cannot afford to lose any money. I briefly mentioned it at the beginning, but to go off of that, you don't just have to sell physical plants. You can sell other things like plant pots or plant art. There's a ton of options out there. So if you just kind of browse through Etsy or Pinterest or really anywhere, if you have a special skill, honestly, specking into one of those options might even let you stand out from the crowd even more and can be a great way to get started. This one's kind of the same, but kind of similar, and that's selling plants locally. Now, again, I did mention the offer up option, but where I think that this one stands out a little bit in my mind is for people who maybe want to do things like go to farmer's markets or pair up with a local small business where you can put your products right inside their store and have them sell out of those. Again, this can be a great way to build up a local presence and not have to worry about the difficulties of shipping and having those return issues like you would if you're shipping online. The next activity is honestly one that I've always thought about but I've never personally experimented with and that's consulting on plants. I think that there's honestly a huge market with this one and it's probably something that you could do both online and in person. What I mean by plant consulting is if you're somebody who's very, very experienced in taking care of plants, either consulting people who have plants and they're sick and they can't figure out how to remedy them, you could certainly charge a very small fee for this and I think it would be really beneficial for a lot of people to have an expert to go to and consult on them. And on the other hand, I think this one would be great if you lived in big cities. I know when I lived in Scottsdale, I always thought that this would be a huge opportunity because there's a ton of super wealthy people there, but perhaps going into people's houses who wanna have live plants, but don't know what plants will do well inside their home. Again, if you have a very specific knowledge of plants, you can easily go into somebody's home and identify what areas plants would survive in and what plants would thrive in those areas specifically. By offering these services, you could, you could potentially save people a ton of money and on the flip side of that, charge people for that service. So again, I've never personally tried it, but I do think that there's a huge potential there. Again, the next one is really great for somebody who's very familiar with plants and is taking care of a lot of different plants or cared for them over time so that they're very experienced. And that's offering your services as a plant sitter. I know that this one sounds kind of goofy at first, but if you're like me and you have a ton of plants, honestly, anytime I go to travel, it is an incredibly stressful experience for me. And when I come home from my travels, the first thing I do is run around my house and see which ones of my plants died, and there's usually at least one. If you can build up a reputation over time as being a trustworthy person who people know that you will come and take care of their plants, I think that this could be another great service that you could offer where it requires very little of your time, as well as allows you to have access to a bunch of cool plants that you might not normally have access to. Getting started, if maybe people aren't comfortable letting you into their house, then I recommend offering the ability for them to drop their plants off at your house to build up that trust over time. This next one's kind of obscure, but it's very specific to people who have trucks. That is to offer a plant transport service. Again, I know this one might sound kind of goofy, but personally for me, I have a very small SUV and to be honest, there's just scenarios where like I encounter a plant that I would love to bring into my home, but I physically cannot move it. By offering this service, again, it might not be something that you know, you're know you doing all day every day, but you could certainly make a few bucks here and there by transporting items for people who are not able to do so themselves. As you build up and specialize over time, I know that there's a need for it, particularly here in Arizona. There's a ton of people who offer services specifically around transporting saguaros. Now obviously that's a very very niche option but there's certainly people doing it currently which means that there's room for more. Last but not least my final recommendation for making money 
is to reach out to local nurseries, people who sell plants, or even plant content creators, and ask them if they need help in their business. Now, to be fair, this one's a little different than, you know, having ownership over your own business, but honestly, that's great for some people. Although I'm not currently looking, in the past I have actually hired people to help me post on Facebook and Instagram, because to be honest, I just hate being on those platforms. For businesses like my own or other nurseries, having somebody who's very knowledgeable about plants is a huge bonus, because you'll be able to tailor their posts more specifically to what their audience is going to want to see. If you have existing skills in social media, marketing, sales, obviously those things are a bonus. If you don't have actual experience, but you have a phone and know how to post on social media, honestly, in a lot of cases, that's all you need. As a matter of fact, I got my first job in marketing by literally overhearing two people talking at a grocery store and asking them if they needed help, and they said yes, and that was my first ever marketing job. With that said, those are all my tips on how to make money with plants for today. Again, if you like this content and you want to see more of these topics delved into deeper in depth, deeper in depth, so many, so many layers of deeper. But um, again, if you want to see these topics talked about more, please, please let me know in the comments down below. If you personally have other ideas on how to make money around plants and I didn't mention them, let them in the comments so that other people can see them. And finally, if you feel stuck in any way as you're getting started in this in these business ideas, please, I mean it from the bottom of my heart, do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to help as many people as I possibly can get started in their businesses. With that said, a final rule of business, never miss out on your shameless plug, my shameless plug for today. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe. It is the absolute number one way to help me support my business. And if you're in the market for plants, go check out my website, leafmealoneplants.com and use code planttube for 10% off your next purchase. If you enjoyed hearing about how I like to make money around my plants, I think you'll really enjoy this video of me doing plant tours around my house, so go check it out next. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end and I hope to see you in the next video.